morning, everyone. Good morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please turn and share God's peace with one another. Our service this morning begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the book of Isaiah. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be find, found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held up my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices. A people who provoke me to my face continually sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster and they say, do not destroy it for there is a blessing in it, so I will do for my servant's sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. The word of the Lord. Psalm 22, verses 18 through 27. We will say this in unison. Psalm 22, verses 18 through 27. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life and the power of God. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of the wild bulls. I will declare your name, my brother. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, who is near him. Stand in the hall of him, O Father, of Israel. All you do of Jacob's line, give the glory. For he does not despise the Lord before the prophet. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when he cries, my praise is the here in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember him and the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him, for he is belong to the Lord. He rules over all 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you who are one in Christ Jesus, and if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. The sequence hymn today is hymn number 827, found in the green Wonder, Love, and Praise hymnal. Please stand. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples arrived in the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, the man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion. For many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on a hillside, a large herd of swine were feeding. And the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When the swineherd saw that all had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and the country. Then people came to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right hand, mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. 
So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. We all know there's at least two sides to every story, and in the case of today's gospel reading, I count there's at least seven. Let's look at how Jesus' miracle of exercising thousands of demons from a man impacted so many. First, the demons who called themselves legion because there were probably somewhere between 3,000 and 6,000 of them in this man. We know this because at that time, a Roman legion was three to 6,000 men. While still possessing the man, they first encountered Jesus and instantly recognized him as Christ. From their perspective, he was here to send them into the abyss. Saving the man was not their concern. They may have felt fear, and they were definitely self-interested. But being captives of Satan and as his servants, they were also compelled to do damage to Jesus' ministry. They easily could have known that those who relied on the pigs for their livelihoods would be angry at Jesus for allowing the pigs to drown. So why not possess the swine and lead them to their destruction? What an easy way to destroy Jesus' ministry in the area. Just a quick run into the lake. What the demons didn't know is that it wasn't time for Jesus' final judgment and that the power of God's love for his children could and will win against the love of money and material items for those who believe. Then there are pigs. Did you know pigs could swim? And I'm sure they were confused, but I'm really not here to talk about the pigs' point of view. Um, seriously, the owners of the pigs, who relied on them for money, were likely furious. Rather than being in awe of the miracle they just, under, they just witnessed, they were understandably upset at losing the things that they valued the most, the things that, re, that they survived on. From their point of view, they were harmed, and perhaps they were only concerned with obtaining justice. However, their inability to see the bigger picture due to being too focused on their money, prevented them from considering the riches that were waiting for them in heaven. God never proclaimed that money was a sin, just the idolatry of it was. Their love for wealth blocked them from the relationship that was worth even more. How about the demon-possessed man? He had been tormented for quite some time. He ran around naked. He lived isolated in tombs. His behaviors were strange and scary to the people who observed him, and probably also to himself. He was often put in shackles to, so that the people who lived in the city could control him, but in his fits, he would break them and run around erratically. I can't imagine what being possessed, much less by thousands, must be like. His suffering was probably, probably led to feelings of terror and hopelessness. And we know that those feelings are not of God. However, when Jesus exercised the demons and freed this man from his bondage, he was changed. He was healed from the inside out and was able to experience peace. I'm sure for the first time in a very long, long time, the man felt the love of God and understood it for the freely given gift that it is. Afterwards, the man had a strong desire to follow Christ. He wanted to be with Christ. However, he submitted to God's will and did what Jesus asked of him. He became the first apostle to the Gentiles 
And I have no doubt that he experienced boundless joy like he had never known before his healing. Think about the people who were given the gift of being able to witness this miracle. What could have been going through their minds? I imagine if we here were to observe something like that, we would be astonished, amazed. We would also likely fear, feel doubt. What we saw might cause fear or maybe some confusion. The actual witnesses had to make a choice to believe in what they saw and ultimately have faith that Christ Jesus is the Son of God or to carry on their lives, which may have been very, very nice of the freedom God offers. I imagine that there were people who ended up believers and some who did not. And regardless of which way people went in their belief, I'm pretty confident that an encounter with God like that changed all of them forever. What about Christ's perspective? If the Gospels have taught us anything about Jesus, it's that he has always knew what he was called to do, and he faithfully did God's will. He didn't worry about destroying the livelihoods of pig owners because that was temporal. And if it was God's will, their livelihoods could be restored. He didn't worry about not casting the demons into the abyss because Jesus knows that he will one day return to the earth to judge all, the living and the dead. He didn't worry about the man because Jesus knew that God had a mission for him to share the good news with the Gentiles. What Christ was focused on was using his authority over the demons to do God's will and to commission the man who he healed to a ministry of telling everyone what God had done for him. What about God's point of view? I can't and won't even pretend to know what that was. I do know that demons are charged with destroying our relationship with God, but in the end, it is God who reigns over all, and demons are powerless over those who trust God. What about us? As people who have heard the word of God in this story specifically, what is our perspective? When we study this scripture, we learn a little from everyone else's perspective. We know that demons exist, not only as fallen angels, but as also personal things that trap us and corrupt us and drive a wedge between us and God. Maybe it's addiction or pride or any other form of sin. Maybe it is the hurt we feel from past relationships or grudges we hold. Maybe it's fear and doubt. Regardless of the demons we individually face, we know that through Christ, they can be driven out. And as Jesus did for the man in the story, he can separate our crazed behavior from the person that God created. Once we accept the gift that God has given us, we can experience the hope and joy that comes from him. One of the most exciting parts of this story for me is the idea that by following and being witnesses of Jesus, we can become who God has designed us to be, just as the possessed man became the one he was supposed to be. That is the change I believe we are all looking for. Whether considered individually or altogether, I think the various points of view all lead to the same thing. God wants us to have faith in him and share his message. Certainly as humans who are still learning to trust God, we may deal with fear, be self-centered, or have some sort of lack of understanding. But if we do what God asks, we will not be confined by and be slaves of Satan. By accepting the Lord's gift, we are free to follow Christ and be an heir with him in God's eternal kingdom. Amen. Continuing on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified for Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic, Apostolic, Catholic Church. That we all may be one. In the end cycle of prayer, please pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, please pray for Grace Episcopal Church in Shadron. In the DR, Christ the King Church, St. Simon the Apostle Church. In the parish cycle of prayer, the fathers of all of our parishes and all dads for this gathering and for all to strive to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Tom, our priest, Terry, our aspirant for diaconate, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for our President Joe Biden, our Governor Pete Ricketts, and for all the elected and appointed officials of our communities in which we live in and all who govern and hold authority in all the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our words may find favor in your sight. Lord, we lift up those in our congregation and those we know who are ill, especially Marilyn B., Edith H., Alberta Y., Tanya S., Steve S., Cole C., Peggy and Frank Z. Are there any others? We also pray for those with special concerns, especially the Lee family, the prisoners of St. Stephen's, are there any others? Lord, have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We remember all who have died, especially Della. Are there any others? Give to all departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your happy kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those who serve our country at home and abroad, especially those who are deployed and are in harm's way. Are there any to mention at this time? Be with them and their families, Lord, giving them comfort and hope until they are once again reunited in peace. We ask that you watch over those who travel, especially Joan M. Are there any others? Keep them safe as only you can. 
We ask that you continue to pour out your blessings on those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Chris C., Bob S., Tim R., Terry S., Michael L., Robert R. Are there any others? And those celebrating anniversaries, Deanna and Dave M., David and Kitty K., John and Pauline P., are, are there any others? O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For your gracious, O lover of souls, and that we give you glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us say it together. Go ahead. Sorry. No. Most merciful God, we confess that, that we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by, by what, what we have done. done and by what we have left on We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 493, found in the blue 1982 hymnal. <laughs>
accept these gifts given out of love for the mission of your church. Let those who benefit from this small token find blessings, grace, and hope in your word, in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error to truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, firstborn of all creation, head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
our post-communion hymn is hymn number 321, found in the blue 1982 hymnal. Please stand. Continuing on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements.
interesting when everyone, anyone can get together. Okay, so please be prepared for some more information on that. Uh, also, uh, I got an email from Jen and we kind of sorted out everything for Della's uh, celebration of life service. So I will send out a constant contact on Monday. Uh, Jean will send out a constant contact on Monday uh, with all the details, but for you right now, the plan is Monday, July 11th, we will open up uh, for celebration of life after the cathedral at 11.30. At the beginning of 10.30, the family will be there to 
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.